let's assume all cylinders firing, hopefully they continue to do that. Uh, is there something that's caught your eye particularly? It could be about the macro, it could be about what business commentary are hearing from new age companies or old companies because suddenly the, the banks and the metals have gone completely out of favor when it even comes to conversations. Or it could be about uh, this whole conversations around jobs and what's happening thereof. Uh, we, we have time for one more question, so I'd love to not ask you what I want to ask you, but try to understand from you what has stood out for you across macro, commentary, micro, what have you. No, I'll, I'll give you like for many years now, I've been playing on the assumption that there are four or five dominant themes which will define India over the next 20 years. The first one was financialization and we are seeing that playing out. Uh, now, it may be banks are taking a pause for now because this time the leadership really went to the corporate banks and the PSU banks and not the so-called higher quality banks of the past, which were HDFC and Kotak. But their time will come too. Uh, so financialization was one theme which one, you know, then fortunately played through the exchanges or wealth managers, asset management companies and so on. Uh, and there's enough room over there because this, this, this theme of financialization is very, 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 very large. And I'm actually happy that sometimes when the banks don't perform, it allows you to nurture your position for longer, uh, even though they're going to keep compounding at, let's say, 15%. Uh, if, they, if they do 15% for 10 years, one is quite happy with that. Uh, the second big theme was, of course, privatization plays, because as the government withdraws uh, from the economy, uh, you will get people. So whether it was the ports or the airports or the telecom players or the airlines, they start creating wealth because these are, in a sense, they become natural monopolies or oligopolies. And these businesses have long lasting trajectories, which incumbents can't easily get shaken out of. So that was kind of area two. Area three was, as we get richer, which we are, uh, is going to be about discretionary expenditure. So whether you're going to travel a lot more, whether you're going to eat out a lot more, whether you're going to buy better cars, better durables, whether you're going to do home improvement. So there are a lot of thematics which come around from consumer discretionary which is theme three. And theme four is as you digitize the economy, all these platform plays of the like I spoke about will become powerful. And while currently we are very excited about manufacturing themes, I particularly uh, you know, uh, have holdings in uh, renewable area, in sustainability, recycling, and stuff like that. Because it's the thesis that what's good for the world is going to be good for business. And if there are not too many competitors around there and you have scale, uh, you can become a very, very large player over there. So those become five dominant things. What I look for now, honestly, is uh, you know someone like this Ola, and again, I'm not recommending this company, nor have I invested in it. But India needs to now go from being a you know processor for other people, like our IT services were, or our generic pharma were, to becoming a product nation, where we should own the underlying technology, we should own the underlying brand, and we should be then becoming global from here. And my, my sort of pet, uh, thing today to look out for is that if China is so ahead of us on whether it's AI or robotics or biotech, we should not miss this like we miss the industrial revolution and they kind of go backwards uh, in the hierarchy of nations. And we need more and more people like this to come out who build the whole tech stack and who own the entire value chain. Uh, and then you can decide where you want to play. So again, uh, like I said, it's not about O-line specific when the valuation is certainly something uh, which is very far ahead of reality. Uh, but someone like that, at an opportune time, if God, for, God willing, there's a crisis in the world, I don't wish anything bad for anyone and the current holders. But you, our job as an investor is to take asymmetrical bets when the odds are in our favor. Currently, everyone is on the same bet on the same time. So when you say that you know banking is hated right now, it gets my ears to open a lot more because then that's the place to look at. Like we were buying PSUs five years ago and PSU banks were being thrown away and discarded. Uh, it whatever is hated eventually comes back because markets have a tendency to revert to mean. So when you go too far away from the mean, you will revert back. So some of our stocks have gone too far in excess of reality, and certainly on the engineering and capital goods and you know PSU and uh, uh, consumer discretionary kind of side of the market, 60, 70, 80 multiples. Because look, long term for a company to make uh, somewhere between 15 to 25 percent return on equity is a big deal. And if you're paying two times, three times, four times of that, uh, I can't imagine how many more years of longevity and high growth do you need to see uh, for you to grow into those earnings. So I tend to be a little more value investor type. Uh, while I believe in the growth of our country and I think we do have fabulous years ahead of us, 
but really value is what you pay uh, and that that's really uh, you know what you should be hoping for to be a kind of a mna specialist that would you buy the entire company at this price yeah that that's all i can submit and that's all that is needed manish such a fin fantastic conversation thank you and i i it what stood out for me like both the things manish chokhani is expressing optimism when he's talking about how indians are going abroad and being the fii's for some of the countries at the same Forward. time right yeah sorry sorry manish no absolutely i mean it's not just about bharti and others buying it the indian investors need to prepare because we will be investing outside in a big way in the next 5 years yeah. the rupee will be a strong stable currency it will be an international currency and we can't be frogs in the well only looking at our market and therefore this tinder box over here will also have to open uh, and you know people will be buying stocks in china and they'll be buying stocks in uk and in us and that will change the geopolitics in our favor because eventually money talks 